The series begins with a pretty lady named Nun Singh. She seemed really happy, but then there was a god who couldn't stop looking at her, and it made Nun Singh feel embarrassed. It turns out they both love a famous writer named Lu Zichan. They were planning to go and get his autograph together. He even boldly asked Nun Singh to join him. They got to know each other better during the outing. Suddenly, they witnessed a woman getting robbed. Nun Singh jumped in and helped the woman, surprising the guy with her skills. The guy got scared and ran away, leaving Nun Singh behind. Later, Nun Singh talked to her senior older sister, CC, about what had happened. Unfortunately, the incident prevented her from getting Lu Zi Chan's autograph. However, she was super excited because she had an interview the next day. This time, she applied to be Lu Zi Chan's personal assistant. When Cece heard this, she immediately cheered Nun Singh on. Later, Nun Singh went back home. She made sure to offer some fruits to her late father, showing her love and respect. Surprisingly, Nun Singh is a big fan of Lao Si Chan, and she even wrote her own novel. When she read the comments from her readers, some of them were not very nice, and it made Nun Singh feel really sad. So she decided to change the main character in her story. This time, she described the character as an evil demon who enjoys playing tricks on humans. But the story isn't just about her novel, cause we also get a glimpse into the world of the character she created, Shou Wu Di. He's a clever, cunning, and self-absorbed man, and Nun Singh is one of the women in his story. Then, while Nun Singh was busy writing, her mom surprised her by praising Wu Di's greatness and reminding her that everyone has their weaknesses. After writing for a while, Nun Singh needed some fresh air, so she went outside. To her surprise, she saw a man named Fairy Zan collecting prayer coins from a fairy pond. There, she scolded him for it. Plus, she had gone there to make a wish for her upcoming interview to go well. Not too long after that, a couple walked by. When Nun Singh saw them, she couldn't help but make a wish, hoping that she could also find love and have an unforgettable romance. At that moment, Fairy Zan seemed to really understand what Nun Singh wanted when he heard her wish. Suddenly, the coin on Nun Singh's necklace fell into the pond. Without hesitation, she jumped into the water. Inside, she found Wu Di unconscious. At first, she thought it was all a dream. But when she woke up, she realized that Wu Di was actually in her lap, which shocked and panicked her. In a hurry, Nun Singh rushed Wu Di to the hospital. But during the trip, she couldn't shake the feeling that the whole incident was just like the story she had written in her novel. In her novel, the characters fell in love at first sight and ended up happily married. Not long after, Wu Di suddenly woke up. Both Nun Singh and Wu Di felt really confused. Even teased Nun Singh a bit as they tried to figure out where they were. Then he asked Nun Singh to explain how he could be there at that time. To make things even more confusing, Nun Singh's coins were now in Woody's hands. When Woody asked Nun Singh some questions, she still couldn't quite understand what was happening. She even thought that Wu Di was intentionally dressed up like that. Since he couldn't get any clear answers, Wu Di reluctantly gave her coins back, although he wasn't very friendly about it. Later, when Wu Di wanted to leave, Nun Singh continued to follow him. This made Wu Di want to show his appreciation by giving Nun Singh a kiss for helping him. However, Nun Singh got scared and backed away. Soon after, Wu Di decided to go search for answers to all the questions in his mind, like why he existed in that era. Suddenly, he met two women who shared some information about what life was like in that time period. He was really good at acting like he knew what was going on, without making others suspicious. Surprisingly, Wu Di met Fairy Zan, who happened to be the one responsible for bringing him to that time period. Then two women who were with Wu Di told him about a library, where he could read all sorts of history books. They even invited him to take some pictures. Once they left, Wu Di used his special abilities to get into the library right away. On the other hand, when Nun Singh got back home, she couldn't believe what had just happened. Not long after, there was a TV broadcast featuring Lu Zi Chan, and it made Nun Singh really happy. But when she saw Lu Zi Chan with a woman on the broadcast, her mom thought they might be in a relationship. However, Nun Singh didn't feel the same way as her mom did. Meanwhile, Wu Di continued searching and reading history books in the library to figure out why he ended up in that time period. The next day, Nun Singh got ready for her interview. She wore clothes that were a bit uncomfortable to look more beautiful and elegant. But during the interview, she got really nervous, especially when Lu Zi Chan was there and it left her speechless. However, just before she left, King noticed her. In a different scene, Wu Di was still busy reading books, but none of them had the answers he was looking for about why he ended up there. Meanwhile, Nun Singh was still feeling frustrated with herself. 
She kept meeting couples and eventually she unexpectedly found herself in need of help. Surprisingly, Wu Di heard Nun Sing's plea for help, and he immediately headed towards her. At first, he was really surprised. In fact, he even gave Nun Sing a bouquet of flowers, which made the situation even more confusing. Wu Di thought that meeting Nun Sing might help him find the answers he was looking for. However, Nun Sing didn't want to bother Wu Di and just needed help getting her heels off. In the end, Wu Di was the one who used his special abilities to help Nun Sing. Later in the evening, Wu Di and Nun Sing were at the bus stop. Wu Di continued to get closer to Nun Sing because he was convinced that she had something to do with him ending up in that era. He wondered how he could immediately come to her aid when she needed help. This left Nun Sing even more confused. Then, when Wu Di told Nun Sing his name and where he came from, she was left speechless because he was exactly like the main character she had written in her story. Overwhelmed, Nun Sing hopped on a bus and ran away. Afterward, Nun Sing returned to the fairy pond and once again, Wu Di was there. His presence surprised her. This time, he asked her to do what she had done before they met, to create an unforgettable love story. So, Nun Sing agreed to follow Wu Di's instructions. However, their efforts didn't seem to work until Wu Di suggested that they both sleep and dream. Nun Sing kept complaining and annoyed him a bit. After a while, Nun Sing eventually fell asleep and found herself in a dream. In her dream, she met Fairy Zan, the guardian of the fairy pond. That's when Nun Sing realized that Wu Di was indeed brought into her world through her own imagination. But she wasn't happy about it because Wu Di, despite being handsome, was actually the villain in her story, and she didn't want him there at all. However, instead of fixing the situation, Fairy Zan asked Nun Sing to understand Wu Di's flaws and couldn't change the condition. Fairy Zan advised Nun Sing to value every moment she spent with Wu Di. When Nun Sing received her necklace, she woke up from the dream but couldn't accept it. She ran away, leaving Wu Di behind. When she got home, Nun Sing hid under the blanket, looking scared. Her mother was surprised by her behavior, thinking that Nun Sing's interview hadn't gone well. Later, when her mother left, Nun Sing deleted the novel she had written, hoping that it would make Wu Di disappear. Then, in the middle of the night, Wu Di's shadow appeared outside Nun Sing's bedroom window. The next morning, Nun Sing was shocked to find Wu Di asleep in her bed. This made her secretly want to leave the room. Suddenly, Wu Di woke up and found himself right behind her. He covered Nun Sing's mouth to keep their hiding spot a secret. This really frightened Nun Sing, and Wu Di requested that they continue sharing a room until he could return to his own time. He even teased her by discussing the moral values of people in ancient times and warned her that if she didn't behave, he might reveal himself. Fortunately, at that time, Nun Sing's mother was out of town for work. Then, Nun Sing ordered a lot of food to satisfy Wu Di's hunger, but she complained because it cost her a lot of money. She felt like she had to serve Wu Di, almost like he was holding her hostage. It didn't stop there, cause when Wu Di wanted to take a shower, Nun Sing tried to stop him, but her efforts were in vain. She had to obey all of his orders, which really annoyed her. Later, Nun Sing was waiting for Cici, who was bringing clothes for Wu Di. However, because she didn't want anyone to know about Wu Di, she made sure CC didn't hear the man's voice from inside her house. There, Nun Sing patiently waited for Wu Di to change his clothes. When Nun Sing saw Wu Di's appearance, she couldn't help but burst into laughter, although she did compliment his haircut. However, Wu Di felt uncomfortable in the clothes he was wearing, and he wanted to buy new ones using Nun Sing's money. This really frustrated Nun Sing, and in a fit of frustration, she jokingly asked Wu Di to end his life which frightened her when he took it seriously. Around the same time, Nun Sing received a call from someone asking her to come to the police station right away. Before leaving, she told Wu Di to stay home and wave goodbye. While Nun Sing was at the police station, Wu Di left the house to buy some clothes at a mall. Surprisingly, CC continued to follow Wu Di wherever he went. When Wu Di entered a store, a shop employee underestimated him, but her attitude quickly changed when she saw lots of money he had with him. In the evening, Nun Sing was walking alone when she received some joyful news that she had been accepted as Lu Zichan's personal assistant. But suddenly, two men surrounded her, and she had to run away to protect herself. At that moment, Nun Sing didn't give up easily and tried to resist them. However, there were two more men, and a tossed cigarette caused a fire accidentally. This really frightened Nun Sing because she had a past trauma related to fires. Luckily, Wu Di arrived just in time to rescue her. In that moment, Nun Sing couldn't help but keep her eyes on Wu Di. Shortly after the police showed up, 
but Wu Di had disappeared by the time they arrived. Nan Xing went back home then, feeling a bit concerned about Wu Di's well-being. However, she was surprised to see that Wu Di had a lot of money. When they discussed the incident, Wu Di didn't admit that he had intentionally come to save Nan Xing. This was when she realized that Wu Di could actually hear her cries for help. She even felt happy because she believed that Fairy Zan had sent Wu Di to rescue her. Later, Nan Xing asked Wu Di to go somewhere with her, but he refused, insisting that Nan Xing was his support. This made her realize that Wu Di was truly wicked and heartless. However, in the end, he agreed to that request with a condition. Surprisingly, Wu Di asked Nan Xing for a cell phone, and he already knew how to use it. He also gave her money for his daily meals. Before Nan Xing left, Wu Di asked her why she was so afraid of fire. It turned out that in junior high school, she had experienced a traumatic fire incident. At night, Wu Di played with her cell phone but accidentally broke Nan Xing's cute cell phone case. They got ready to sleep in their separate houses. The next day, Nan Xing was excited to go to work, but wanted to check on Wu Di's condition before leaving. However, he didn't want her to stay, so he picked her up and took her out of the house. Surprisingly, Wu Di had become smarter in adapting to modern life. Finally, Nan Xing was at the company for her first day of work. She was introduced to her co-workers and given a tour of the company by Jaw. During her time there, she also met King, which made her very nervous. It turned out that Nan Xing didn't quite meet the criteria for the assistant King originally wanted, but King chose her because she saw Nan Xing as someone who never gave up. After that, she started working, but she felt lost as she didn't know what to do while others were busy with their tasks. In the evening, Wu Di was still trying to figure out how to return to his own time, and he was waiting for dinner to arrive. Meanwhile, Nan Xing ordered some food at a restaurant and enjoyed a hearty meal. She did this to celebrate her first day at work, even though she had no one to accompany her. On the other hand, Wu Di wanted to leave the house because dinner hadn't arrived. However, before he could go, he heard Nan Xing's plea for help again. This time, she asked for assistance in a playful manner, like the couples she saw there. Surprisingly, her request once again summoned Wu Di to her side. However, he just wanted to leave, yet he found himself unable to ignore Nan Xing's requests, no matter how trivial they seemed. Afterward, while on their way home, Nan Xing couldn't quite understand Wu Di's behavior. Similarly, Wu Di was also puzzled by the strange events between them. Then, unintentionally, Nan Xing kept seeking Wu Di's help, and in an instant, he was by her side again. This time, he placed Nan Xing's head on his shoulder because she seemed exhausted. In the evening, Nan Xing and Wu Di were at the fairy pond. There, he explained to her that he felt compelled to assist her and look after her when she needed help or felt tired. Through all this, Wu Di realized that Nan Xing actually wanted a perfect boyfriend. With some determination, Nan Xing confessed that she had previously wished for an unforgettable love. This revelation surprised Wu Di greatly, and he was angry at Nan Xing's reckless actions. In fact, he even stated that she didn't deserve an unforgettable love, which left Nan Xing feeling very upset. Meanwhile, Wu Di headed straight home to pack his things, acting as though he would never fall in love with Nan Xing. There he glanced at a guidebook for modern life that was in front of him. Surprisingly, it turned out to be a book created by Nan Xing to help Wu Di adapt to life in the modern era. At first, he seemed pleased, but out of pride, he tossed the book aside. On the other hand, Nan Xing stood at the shop's edge when suddenly a heavy rain poured down. She initially decided to brave the rain alone, but then Wu Di appeared unexpectedly. To her surprise, he expressed his desire to provide her with an unforgettable love, which Nan Xing immediately resisted. She thought Wu Di was asking her out. However, Wu Di's intention was to help Nan Xing find someone who could give her an unforgettable love. They decided to go home together. When they arrived, Nan Xing's mother was already there. To cover up, Nan Xing lied, saying that Wu Di's name was Song and that he was Cici's cousin. Nan Xing's mother then invited them to have dinner together to celebrate Nan Xing's success at work. Later at home, Wu Di scolded Nan Xing for lying about his identity by hitting her on the head. After the meal, they all ate together and Nan Xing's mother engaged in a lot of conversation with Wu Di. However, Nan Xing eventually insisted that Wu Di leave her house because she was concerned about his well-being after eating her mother's cooking. After this, Nan Xing's mother continued to talk about Wu Di and surprisingly liked his personality. She even seemed to approve of a relationship between Nan Xing and Wu Di. On the other hand, Wu Di once again caught Nan Xing's attention when she gave him a bottle of medicine. This made Wu Di to retrieve the live guidebook he had discarded earlier from the trash. He also remembered Nan Xing's desire for an unforgettable love. 
However, instead of pursuing Nun Singh, Wu Di decided to find someone who could provide her with an unforgettable love so that he could return to his own time. Nevertheless, he held on to the two items that Nun Singh had given him. The next morning, they both woke up and Nun Singh was surprised to see Wu Di waiting for her outside her house. They headed to the sports ground of Nun Singh Seniors, where CC kept trying to chat with Wu Di. During their conversation, Wu Di learned that Nun Singh had never dated anyone before. Afterward, Wu Di made a decision that surprised Nun Singh. Wu Di wanted to experience what it was like to be in modern times for a day. Nun Singh found this unpleasant, but was comforted by the fact that Wu Di would eventually find a way back to his own time. She encouraged him to keep trying. Then, Nun Singh went to work, and it was her first day as Lu Zichan's personal assistant. Their meeting left Nun Singh speechless, and it seemed that Lu Zichan didn't really like her. This realization made Nun Singh feel guilty. On the other hand, Wu Di is still thinking about what CC said to him that men like women who could be gentle, pampered, and feminine. But Nun Singh doesn't fit that description at all. One evening, when Nun Singh came home feeling uninspired, Wu Di suddenly pulled her into his house. It turns out he just wanted to take a close look at her and even asked for a photo. When Nun Singh sent the photo, it annoyed Wu Di, and he started thinking of a plan to get what he wanted. The next day, before heading to work, Nun Singh prepared breakfast for Wu Di. When she tried to check his phone, Wu Di immediately stopped her, making Nun Singh feel very nervous. At work, Nun Singh noticed something strange about her colleague's behavior. So she kept asking for tasks until she ended up cleaning the company's warehouse. Jaw, one of her colleagues, praised her and then dropped a surprising piece of news that a handsome man was looking for Nun Singh. At that moment, Nun Singh hurried to meet Wu Di. It turns out he wanted to invite her to have dinner together. But when they got to the mall, Wu Di asked Nun Singh to change her clothes, which made her uncomfortable. She had to go along with it. Afterward, they went to a restaurant. Surprisingly, Wu Di had set up a blind date for Nun Singh with many guys there which scared her. She tried to leave, but Wu Di threatened her by mentioning her mother. So, Nun Singh reluctantly went along with it and met all those guys, each with their quirks. During the blind date, King contacted Nun Singh and asked for her help to retrieve Lu Zichan's manuscript from his home. Soon after, Nun Singh rushed to Lu Zichan's house but couldn't find anyone there. She kept searching until she discovered blood-like stains on Lu Zichan's body, which terrified her. She immediately asked Wu Di for help. Right then, Wu Di rushed over and checked on Lu Zichan's condition. To everyone's surprise, the blood stain turned out to be just rose-scented bath soap. Thankfully, Lu Zichan was perfectly fine. At that time, Wu Di helped revive Lu Zichan, and when he woke up, Nun Singh's attitude suddenly changed. She seemed very nervous, even her legs were cramping. So, Wu Di ended up being the one who brought food for Lu Zichan. Wu Di thought that Nun Singh might have special feelings for Lu Zichan, but she denied it. Nevertheless, Wu Di offered to help Nun Singh pursue a relationship with Lu Zichan, but she declined. Then Nun Singh playfully teased Wu Di, and to everyone's surprise, he got really embarrassed. She did this to show Wu Di that winning someone's heart isn't as easy as teasing them. Later, they all went home together. Wu Di was surprised by how fast his heart was beating when Nun Singh teased him, but he couldn't believe he felt that way about a girl like her. It turned out that Nun Singh's mother was aware of their closeness and was very happy about it. When Wu Di got back home, he playfully teased Nun Singh. It turned out that he wanted a book by Lu Zi Chan to get to know his personality. Nun Singh eventually gave him the book, showing that she really cared about it. The next day, Nun Singh was surprised by how detailed Wu Di's description of Lu Zi Chan was. He did all of this because he genuinely wanted to help Nun Singh find a special love. After Nun Singh left, her mother brought some food for Wu Di, and they had a chat. Surprisingly, he learned that Nun Singh's mother wasn't her biological mother. Years ago, they were just neighbors. However, a tragic fire accident claimed the lives of Nun Singh's father and brother. From that point on, Nun Singh and her mother became like a real mother and daughter. Nun Singh's mother also mentioned that if Nun Singh were to give away their house, that person must be truly special to her. After Nun Singh's mother left, Wu Di couldn't stop thinking about her and felt really confused about the situation. Not long after, Wu Di suddenly noticed that Nun Singh was standing at his door. Her behavior surprised him, and he started to wonder if he was special to her. Wu Di boldly guessed that Nun Singh didn't want to go on the blind date because she might already have feelings for someone else. To his surprise, Nun Singh took the opportunity to confess that she liked him. This made Wu Di think about his next steps. When Nun Singh returned home, Wu Di pulled her into his house once again. 
It turned out that Wu Di wanted to let her know that he agreed to date her. This surprised Nun Singh a lot. However, his agreement was more about helping her find an unforgettable love, and Nun Singh insisted that she didn't like him. Nun Singh kept saying this because Wu Di didn't believe her. Eventually, she embarrassed Wu Di by claiming that he was the one expressing his feelings for her, and she even recorded the moment. That night, Wu Di couldn't stop thinking about it, unable to believe that Nun Singh's feelings weren't for him. In a quiet moment, he entered Nun Singh's room and saw her sleeping. This made him even more convinced that she liked him. In reality, after Wu Di left, Nun Singh was just dreaming about wanting him to stay. The following day, Wu Di went to see CC. This time, he went to understand how Nun Singh would act if she liked someone. He discovered that when Nun Singh likes someone, she really understands their feelings and can empathize with them. With this insight, Wu Di left, knowing what he needed to do. Meanwhile, Nun Singh had just finished exercising and looked very concerned about Lu Zi Chan. She expressed her displeasure with his actions. Suddenly, Wu Di invited Nun Singh to have a drink with him. At that moment, he had started feeling lonely and shared some sad aspects of his life, which made him cry. Surprisingly, Nun Singh also felt Wu Di's sadness and tried to comfort him. It turned out that Wu Di had done all this intentionally so that Nun Singh could understand his feelings and empathize with him. He was confident that she would admit she liked him. However, Nun Singh was also upset because she had a problem related to her boss, which made Wu Di feel very concerned. The next day, Nun Singh returned to work and found some people causing a commotion in the company. She was then told to deliver a package to Lu Zi Chan's office. When she entered his room, she was surprised to see King and Lu Zi Chan there. Nun Singh quickly hid and overheard their conversation. Later, when Lu Zi Chan tried to sit down, he tripped over Nun Singh's foot, revealing her presence. Without saying a word, Nun Singh tried to leave the room, but Lu Zi Chan stopped her. She initially wanted to throw away the package but changed her mind about going back to see Lu Zi Chan. Nun Singh seemed like she was in a daze, arguing with Lu Zi Chan and urging him to report the incident to the police. However, Lu Zi Chan refused, leading to a heated debate about his safety. Nun Singh was determined to catch the terrorist, but eventually, she left the room. Later, while in the restroom, Nun Singh felt confused about what to do. She wanted to catch the perpetrator but wasn't sure how. In the end, she decided to ask Woody for help. When Woody was watching a romantic drama to learn about love, he didn't wait long to put it into practice. However, the situation was quite risky because they were in the women's restroom. Jaw was also there to check on Nun Singh. Eventually, they managed to leave the restroom and find safety. It was then that Nun Singh asked Wu Di for help in catching the bad guy. After some convincing, Wu Di agreed to assist her. In the evening, they go for their mission. Although Wu Di continued to disagree with Nun Singh's methods, she told him about her reasons for admiring Lu Zi Chan. Several years ago, a tragedy had left Nun Singh feeling hopeless, and Lu Zi Chan's kind personality had helped her regain her zest for life. Soon after, the bad guy arrived unexpectedly, forcing Wu Di to arrest him. But when Nun Singh caught up to Wu Di, she was alarmed to find him in a hard situation. However, it turned out that Wu Di was only pretending to be unconscious, which angered Nun Singh greatly. She cried and eventually left him. At that time, Wu Di had successfully captured the bad guy, but he could tell that Nun Singh was upset and angry. This made him feel guilty and he even suggested that he deserved to be punished to avoid causing any more trouble for Nun Singh. However, Nun Singh didn't like Wu Di's words, so he tried to make her laugh. Surprisingly, Nun Singh also showed that she was genuinely concerned about Wu Di. Afterward, they went out to enjoy the night air together. During their time together, Nun Singh apologized to Wu Di for putting his life in danger, but Wu Di didn't mind at all. In fact, he was happy because his help had secured Nun Singh a permanent job thanks to Lu Zi Chan. Soon after, Nun Singh officially became a permanent employee, and her colleagues were thrilled. Later that evening, Nun Singh contacted Wu Di and asked him to meet her. They met up, and Nun Singh invited Wu Di to play a game. At first, Wu Di was reluctant to join in, but seeing how much fun Nun Singh was having, he eventually agreed to play with her. They played multiple games together, and being in each other's company made them both very happy. After they finished playing games, Wu Di asked Nun Singh to get some milk tea. While he waited, Nun Singh went to buy the drinks. During this time, Wu Di spotted Lu Zi Chan in a jewelry store and realized that the woman Lu Zi Chan liked was going to be proposed to by someone else. Later, Wu Di visited Nun Singh again. This time, Nun Singh not only brought drinks but also showed him how to interact with the doll she had given him. 
Although Wu Di was initially hesitant, their time together was a way for Nun Sing to show her appreciation to him. At night, Nun Sing kept looking at pictures of dolls and photos of Wu Di on her phone. Meanwhile, Wu Di was occupied talking to the doll that Nun Sing had given him. There he found it a bit strange that Nun Sing named the doll after herself, even though they were not alike at all. He continued to playfully scold the doll because he found it a little annoying. The following day, Wu Di continued to playfully annoy Nun Sing, who was still asleep, until she got frustrated with him. Eventually, she had to go over to Wu Di's house to see what he wanted. It turned out he wanted to give her some clothes, surprising her. However, his intention was to boost her confidence when meeting Lu Zichan and strengthening their relationship. Nun Sing initially refused that gift because the clothes weren't her style, but he didn't give up. Wu Di kept trying to encourage her and build her self-assurance. Realizing his good intentions, Nun Sing eventually accepted the clothes and thanked him. She began to see that Wu Di wasn't always mischievous, and his success in persuading her made him happy because he was one step closer to his goal. The next day, Nun Sing went to work as usual, wearing the clothes Wu Di had given her. She started her tasks with enthusiasm, especially when Lu Zichan assigned her a job. However, her real task was to observe King's mood because it seemed like Lu Zichan was fond of her. Not long after, Nun Sing went to meet King. However, when she reached King's room, she almost tripped. Luckily, King was kind and helped Nun Sing, encouraging her to change her appearance. Afterward, Nun Sing returned to Lu Zichan's room. Lu Zichan was eagerly awaiting Nun Sing's arrival because he wanted to ask about King. He was visibly happy when Nun Sing told him that King was in a good mood and not wearing any rings. However, his happiness quickly faded when he noticed a jewelry box on King's table. In the evening, Wunda contacted Nun Sing and urged her not to go home because he knew that Lu Zichan was still at the company. This was an opportunity for her to get closer to him. However, Nun Sing didn't take Wu Di's advice. She returned to the company to study and wait for Lu Zichan to leave. Shortly after, Wu Di also showed up with food and alcohol, all in an effort to help Nun Sing get a chance for a special relationship with Lu Zichan. Late at night, Nun Sing found Lu Zichan drunk and decided to help him. However, the elevator they were in suddenly stopped. Nun Sing tried to seek help from the CCTV guard through the elevator's monitor, but it turned out to be Wu Di's doing. He had planned this situation to create a more romantic atmosphere for Nun Sing and Lu Zichan, especially since Lu Zichan was drunk. Since there was no help, Nun Sing and Lu Zichan had to wait in the elevator. This situation prompted Lu Zichan to share that he had feelings for King, but he told the story in a way that didn't reveal he was talking about himself. Can't listen to the story any longer, Nun Sing pretended to be asleep to make Lu Zichan stop. However, he grew concerned, thinking something had happened to her. Then he checked on her, and Wu Di observed all of this, thinking that Lu Zichan had ill intentions towards Nun Sing. Seeing this, Wu Di couldn't bear it, and took Nun Sing away from the elevator, as it was part of his plan. However, he couldn't control his jealousy. Nun Sing eventually realized that Wu Di had planned everything. When Nun Sing asked Wu Di for an explanation, he just walked away. Later, Wu Di tripped, and in his frustration, he displayed more jealousy. He didn't want Nun Sing to like Lu Zi Chan and praised her while still being proud, and not explicitly admitting that she was beautiful. Wu Di accidentally mentioned that he had a specific plan to return to his roots, causing him to run away from Nun Sing. When Wu Di got home, he was still waiting for Nun Sing, but she didn't come home right away. Eventually, she returned, but she was upset and took out her frustration on Wu Di. This surprised him a lot, and he started feeling something unusual that day. He couldn't stop thinking about it and couldn't believe that he might actually like Nun Sing. This feeling of disbelief kept bothering him and made him anxious, so he decided to figure out his true feelings. One night, while Nun Sing was fast asleep, Wu Di went into her room and looked at her face. However, accidentally, she ended up giving him a slap. After spending some time in her room, Woody realized that he didn't actually have romantic feelings for Nun Sing, and this made him very happy. He continued to be happy when she was asleep. The next morning, Nun Sing woke up, but she found herself all wrapped up in a blanket, like a cocoon. She quickly got ready for work, but when she was about to leave, she saw Wu Di waiting for her. Wu Di had been wanting to follow her, but Nun Sing was still upset with him. She didn't trust what he said anymore, even though he had apologized. So, she left without him. When Nun Sing arrived at her workplace, she unexpectedly bumped into Lu Zichan in the elevator. They both looked awkward, and even the people in the elevator could sense it. 
Meanwhile, Wune couldn't stop thinking about what Nunsing had said, doubting if she had misjudged him. Initially, she had thought Wu Di was a good person, and this made him feel uneasy. He even took out his frustration on a doll. In another part of the story, Nunsing was confused by a co-worker who thought she had a special relationship with Lu Zi Chan. Luckily, at that moment, Wu Di showed up wanting to meet Nunsing, which relieved her from her co-worker's pressure. He even bragged about the money he had with him. This time, Woody wanted to ask Nunsing to join him for lunch, but she said no. So, Woody had to convince her by showing her a flash drive with CCT footage of Nunsing and Lu Zichan. This made her agree to go with Wu Di. When they got to the restaurant, Wu Di handed the flash drive to Nunsing, but she was skeptical that there was only one video on it. He had to promise that it was the only recording to make her believe him. Once things got better, they ordered some food and enjoyed their meal. Surprisingly, Wu Di had never tried ice cream before. Meanwhile, Nunsing received a call from Cici, who asked her to join her and two male colleagues. Wu Di looked jealous again upon hearing this, but he pretended to support Nunsing dating someone else. It was only after Nunsing left that Wu Di could freely express his jealousy. In the evening, Cici, Nunsing, and Cici's friend, Hao, all met together at a restaurant. Nunsing and Hao chatted a lot. Surprisingly, Wu Di was also there keeping an eye on Nunsing. He felt annoyed seeing how close they were, but there wasn't much he could do. Eventually, Wu Di decided to leave. After the gathering, Nunsing bought some food and drinks for herself. She had a lot of alcohol and kept talking. Meanwhile, Wu Di was at home eating snacks, feeling upset because Nunsing hadn't come home. Finally, she did come home, but she called Wu Di instead. It turns out Nunsing had bought ice cream for him because she felt bad that he had never tried it before. At that moment, Wu Di was happy, especially because Nun Sing was so pretty and cute. They both ate the ice cream and got close, making Wu Di nervous. When Nun Sing tried to wipe ice cream from Wu Di's lips, he quickly returned the favor, forgetting that her own lips were also messy from the ice cream. Then, Wu Di took Nun Sing back to her room, showing great care for her. They accidentally held hands, and Wu Di didn't let go, even falling asleep next to Nun Sing's bed that night. When Wu Di woke up, he was still watching over Nunsing. Surprisingly, she woke up too and held his hand again before falling asleep. All of this left Wu Di speechless. However, Nunsing's mother suddenly entered the room, and Wu Di quickly hid. There, Nunsing remembered what had happened between them and rushed to meet him. And Wu Di, realizing this, hurried back to his house, pretending he had just woken up, and hid Nunsing's belongings left at his house so she wouldn't suspect anything. Later, when Wu Di opened his door, he was captivated by Nunsing's beauty. He even started daydreaming about romantic moments with her. But he quickly snapped out of it, and Nunsing began to sense something odd about Wu Di. She had come to ask if something had happened between them, but he claimed nothing had. Nunsing felt like all her memories with Wu Di were just dreams. However, before she left, she got a glimpse of Wu Di's tidy room, which surprised her. Wu Di, on the other hand, posed on his bed, showing how he slept. Nunsing, Feeling that Wu Di's room was too messy, decided to help tidy it up. This made Wu Di even more uneasy. But it didn't stop there. Nunsing even checked Wu Di's forehead to see if he was okay. This sent Wu Di's imagination running wild. After Nunsing left, Wu Di tried to calm himself down and threw away anything related to her to feel more at ease. Strangely though, instead of feeling calmer, Wu Di felt like Nunsing was still around him, which made him very anxious. In the afternoon, when Wu Di returned home, he saw Nunsing on the stairs of their house. He thought it was just his imagination, but she was really there. However, Wu Di acted strangely, trying to avoid her. Suddenly, they discovered that Wu Di's house was flooding. Nunsing immediately helped him shut off the leaking water. Once again, Wu Di couldn't help but be captivated by Nunsing's beauty as she got wet. Eventually, he had to ask her to leave his house. In the evening, Wu Di, Nunsing, and her mother celebrated together at a restaurant to mark her mother's birthday. Wu Di still felt nervous when he was around Nunsing. They had some fun when Nunsing brought out a birthday cake for her mother, which confused Wu Di even more, trying to control his feelings for Nunsing. Later, as they were heading home, Wu Di decided to take a walk alone, but Nunsing kept following him. She sensed that Wu Di was upset because his behavior seemed strange. She tried to talk to him and convince him but he appeared even more annoyed. Eventually, Nunsing decided to stop bothering him to avoid making him angrier. Meanwhile, Wu Di was still waiting for Nunsing to return. Feeling increasingly uneasy, he turned to reading some books, but he stumbled upon another photo of Nunsing in one of the books. 
Woody then searched online for ways to stop loving someone, but couldn't find an answer because feelings can't be easily suppressed or eliminated. During this time, Wu Di received messages from Nun Singh. It made him happy because she still remembered what he wanted. However, this happiness didn't last long as he didn't want to feel those emotions anymore. The next morning, Nun Singh was still waiting for a message from Wu Di. She didn't dare to say goodbye to him because she thought he was still upset. Even when she was at work, she kept waiting for his reply. Meanwhile, Wu Di was trying to calm himself down, but he found himself still thinking about Nun Singh. He was surprised by this and tried other activities to distract himself, but nothing seemed to work. Then, Nun Singh continued to message him, and even when he was meditating, he couldn't get her off his mind. Eventually, he bumped into Lu Zi Chan. After a while, Nun Singh kept contacting Wu Di, and he had to answer her call. She wanted to invite him to play a game, but he initially refused. However, when she spoke from her heart, Wu Di couldn't resist and joined her. At that time, Nun Singh was a bit surprised, but they ended up playing together. She apologized for making him angry, but in reality, Wu Di wasn't angry with her. He just couldn't express his true feelings. It turned out that Si Si and Hao were also there, playing with them. At that time, they played a game called Secret Room and had to complete various challenges to finish it. Nun Singh and Wu Di had to mimic photo poses to win the game. At first, they were doing well with the poses, but the last one was tricky because it required them to hug each other. This made Wu Di nervous, but he eventually hugged Nun Singh, realizing he genuinely liked her. He felt comfortable hugging her. However, Nun Singh left as soon as she saw the door was open. Soon after, they went home together, and Wu Di was still surprised that Nun Singh didn't seem to notice his feelings. Nevertheless, she managed to keep the atmosphere cheerful and fun. When Wu Di got home, he couldn't stop thinking about when he hugged Nun Singh, which made him happy. The next day, he dressed neatly because he planned to invite Nun Singh for breakfast at his place, and he even prepared the breakfast himself. However, she didn't even say goodbye to him as she usually did, and this made Wu Di very upset. Later at the company, King called Nun Singh into her office. This time, King knew that Nun Singh had written a novel, and the characters in it were Lu Zi Chan, Nun Singh, and Wu Di. At first, Nun Singh was scared, but it turned out that King liked her novels and asked her about them. Afterward, Wu Di messaged Nun Singh because she hadn't heard from her. It turns out, she was busy helping Lu Zi Chan get closer to King. After waiting for a while, Wu Di couldn't wait any longer and decided to invite Nun Singh to have lunch with him. Shortly after, Nun Singh joined him, and this time, Wu Di made it seem like they were on a date. He even playfully had her feed him. But suddenly, one of Nun Singh's co-workers joined them, disrupting her time together. Wu Di got annoyed and used his strength to make sure Nun Singh could sit next to him. After finishing lunch, Wu Di still seemed very upset and was looking for ways to be alone with Nun Singh. Eventually, he invited her to play the Room of Secrets game again. At first, Nun Singh declined the invitation, but because of something, she changed her mind. When it was time to leave work, Woody was already waiting for Nun Singh to come out of the company. He even showed her a book titled Sit Next to You Looking at the Clouds, which surprised Nun Singh because of his change in attitude. In the evening, they finally started playing the game again, but this time it was a bit different from before. Woody mainly wanted a chance to hug Nun Singh, like they did in the previous game. However, in the final round, a ghost in the game wanted to kiss Nun Singh as a mysterious gift. Woody couldn't accept this and quickly took Nun Singh away from the game. He felt that the game wasn't very exciting because there were no opportunities for them to hug. Afterward, they went home. Nun Singh was busy writing a novel but couldn't decide what to write about, so she decided to go to the fairy pond for inspiration. Surprisingly, Woody was there too, venting his frustration because Nun Singh never seemed to understand his feelings. Nun Singh also noticed Woody's presence. Nun Singh started asking about Woody's change in behavior, and when she approached him, he became very nervous and couldn't look at her in the face. His arrival made Nun Singh feel anxious, especially when Woody suddenly fainted as she touched his forehead. Soon after, Nun Singh bring Woody home to rest because he appeared seriously ill, with a high fever of 40 degrees. This worried her a lot. However, it turned out that Woody had been pretending to be sick just so Nun Singh would continue to take care of him. When she wanted to leave, Woody acted helpless again. In the end, she stayed and fed him, which made Woody very happy. But when Nun Singh tried to leave again, Woody suddenly had a nosebleed and fainted. After he woke up, he asked Nun Singh to stay with him until he fell asleep, and she agreed, eventually falling asleep next to him. 
The next morning, Nun Singh had already prepared porridge for Wu Di. Meanwhile, Wu Di was pretending to be sick, but then noticed Nun Singh approaching. He quickly resumed his act. Surprisingly, this time, Nun Singh seemed genuinely concerned about him. However, she had to leave for work, which prompted Wu Di to use a strategy to make her stay. Then, Wu Di told Nun Singh that he would only recover if someone kept him company and cheered him up. Unexpectedly, when Nun Singh learned this, she even brought her mother to take care of Wu Di, completely disrupting his plan. At work, Nun Singh was still busy with Lu Zichan, who asked for her advice on how to approach King. After that, when her work was done, Nun Singh rushed home, leaving Wu Di looking tormented by her mother's care. When Nun Singh got home, she received good news that Wu Di's health had improved. She brought dinner to Wu Di but left after delivering it. He then tried to find a way to spend more time with Nun Singh. He deliberately caused a fire at Nun Singh's house and invited her and her mother to stay overnight at his place. However, his efforts didn't work because Nun Singh's mother didn't give them a chance to be alone. Instead, she invited them to play cards together. Later, when Wu Di was about to go to bed, he consoled himself, knowing that he still had many opportunities to be alone with Nun Singh since they would be staying at his house for a few days. The next morning, Wu Di prepared breakfast for everyone and Nun Singh's mother praised his cooking. They all ate together. But Wu Di looked unhappy because Nun Singh wanted to fix the electricity in her house immediately. In the evening, an electrician came to check her house but found no damage. They had to damage the wall to replace the cables with new ones. Wu Di then offered them to stay longer at his house and Nun Singh's mother agreed. They had dinner together, and this time, Nun Singh and Wu Di were planning to watch a movie together, which made him very happy. After that, they went to the movies and got some snacks. All of this made Wu Di think that something romantic might happen between them. However, when they were at the cinema, Wu Di didn't feel the romance he expected. Until finally, Wu Di invited Nun Singh to watch another movie. Surprisingly, Wu Di actually asked Nun Singh to watch a kid's movie, so Nun Singh was just keeping him company. But then, Nun Singh fell asleep on Wu Di's shoulder as soon as the movie started. This made Wu Di really nervous because he couldn't wake Nun Singh up when the movie ended. Then, they went home together. While they were on their way, they talked and even Nun Singh shared some problems she was going through. In the end, Wu Di came up with a brilliant idea to help Nun Singh. He suggested that she write a novel about their meeting. At first, she was a bit confused about where to start, but not long after. Wu Di sent her a message to check on the progress of her novel because he was interested in it. In reality, Wu Di was more than willing to help Nun Singh and he fully supported her career as a writer. This made Nun Singh believe that Wu Di was genuinely supportive of her. Surprisingly, he had assumed that Nun Singh would write a love story about them. He thought that including a romantic scene would inspire Nun Singh to write more passionately. However, his assumptions were completely wrong. The following day, when Wu Di saw that Nun Singh and her mother had left the house, he went into her room to take a look at the novel she was working on. To his surprise, the novel portrayed Wu Di as a very cruel character. In fact, the novel was titled My Devil Neighbor. Knowing this made Wu Di realize that all this time, Nun Singh had viewed him as a neighbor from hell. This greatly angered Wu Di because he had been sincere in his support for Nun Singh. However, instead of appreciating his support, Nun Singh responded by portraying him negatively in her novel. Consequently, Wu Di decided to take revenge for what Nun Singh had done. This time, he wanted to write the truth by explaining that it was Nun Singh who had pursued him. After finishing the story, Wu Di immediately gave it to Nun Singh. However, Nun Singh didn't accept the story because she felt it didn't represent her character accurately. So she took out her frustration on a doll. It turned out that all of Wu Di's stories were based on what Nun Singh had said when they first met. Wu Di then asked Nun Singh to show him the novel before it was published. He pretended not to know its contents, and as a result, Nun Singh decided to end her relationship with Wu Di. Afterward, Wu Di started overthinking things because Nun Singh's initial impression of him was not very good. However, he believed it was just a misunderstanding because he didn't intend to be unkind to Nun Singh. The following day, Wu Di met Si Si again and tried to find out what Nun Singh's ideal man was like. He learned that Nun Singh liked men who were gentle, charismatic, polite, elegant, and warm-hearted. Knowing this, he thought he could meet all these criteria by himself. The next day, while Nun Singh was at work, she got a message from Wu Di. This time, he invited her to his house, but the message was very kind and polite. Surprisingly, Wu Di was starting to change and Nun Singh noticed this, which made her smile. Later in the evening, Nun Singh met Wu Di, who was looking at the night sky. 
He even stopped her from turning on the lights in the house. His attitude had completely transformed, and Nun Sing was a bit confused. It seemed like Wu Di was really making an effort to be a caring person, showing genuine concern for her. Eventually, he allowed Nun Sing the freedom to do what she liked, whether it was writing novels or anything else. This newfound freedom made Nun Sing very happy, and she decided to leave Wu Di. However, when Nun Sing left feeling so joyful, Wu Di felt a bit angry because he didn't expect her to leave so suddenly. But he quickly tried to calm himself down because he was trying to be a warm and understanding person. Meanwhile, Nun Sing remained quite happy because she had finally begun working on her novel. However, she was still unsure about how to conclude the story. The following day, while Nun Sing was still feeling frustrated with her novel, CC reached out to her for help. Soon after, CC, Nun Sing, Wu Di, and Ho found themselves at a gym. Initially, they came across as somewhat arrogant, but when Wu Di approached two strong men at the gym, he was surprisingly polite. It turned out that these individuals had been involved in bad activities related to CC and house clubs. With Wu Di's presence, he aimed to resolve the issue peacefully. There, Nun Sing found this a bit odd because Wu Di didn't resort to violence. Eventually, Wu Di was surrounded by a group of people. The boss among them claimed that the one who struck first would be at fault. Realizing the situation, Wu Di quickly asked Nun Sing to record what was happening. Soon after, Wu Di was unexpectedly struck by one of the people there, which made him to teach them all a lesson. Afterwards, they returned to the club, and Wu Di received praise from all the club members for his help. He even earned the nickname of being their hero, and everyone was really happy about it. Later, on their way back home, Nun Sing couldn't stop complimenting Wu Di. She acknowledged his greatness and good looks, and she planned to include these things in her novel. She also realized that Wu Di had changed a lot in the past few days. However, she kindly asked Wu Di to just be himself. Hearing this request made Wu Di feel a bit uneasy. In the end, he surprised Nun Sing, but he still tried to find excuses to hide the fact that he had feelings for her. In the evening, Nun Sing got back to work on her novel, this time focusing on writing about Wu Di's kindness and good looks. The next night, Wu Di and Nun Sing hung out with all the members of the CC club. They had become quite close by then. The club members even challenged Wu Di to a competition, but none of them could beat him. Then, it was Nun Sing's turn, and surprisingly, Wu Di kept his eyes on her. Even though she was able to defeat him in the game, she was a bit tipsy and kept looking at CC and Hao together. After the game, Nun Sing and Wu Di went home together, chatting along the way. It seemed like he wanted Nun Sing to see him as more than just a friend, but she didn't quite get it. However, he was relieved that Nun Sing considered him her partner in writing novels. When Wu Di got home, he read a novel written by Nun Sing. Fortunately, he wasn't upset, even though there were some things in the novel that didn't quite fit. He planned to help Nun Sing improve the story. When Nun Sing returned home, Wu Di was very happy because she had a better opinion of him. In the following nights, they met up to revise and discuss Nun Sing's novel. They also shared jokes and had a great time. After several nights of hard work, they finally completed the novel. The next night, Nun Sing and Wu Di received some exciting news that their novel had made it to the final round. This news made Nun Sing so happy that she couldn't help but hug Wu Di, not even realizing it. The following day, they were still overjoyed. Nun Sing and Wu Di met with King to discuss the contract for their novel. There, King praised their work highly. Later in the evening, Nun Sing and Wu Di went home together. That night had a slightly different atmosphere because Wu Di cared a lot about Nun Sing. He even mustered the courage to ask her out on a date to experience the interactions similar to those in their novel. They went through nearly all the interactions from the story, except for holding hands. Finally, with a lot of bravery, Wu Di reached out and held Nun Sing's hand, making them both very nervous and embarrassed. When Nun Sing got home, she was filled with happiness. She looked at photos and videos of Wu Di on her phone once again. At that time, Wu Di was also experiencing the same joy. He even practiced a romantic scene with a nearby doll. However, he still couldn't believe that he wanted to be Nun Sing's boyfriend and dreamt of them getting married and starting a small family. All these thoughts were overwhelming for Wu Di, and he found it hard to believe. The following day, Nun Sing was at work when she came across the Pena event celebration on her cell phone. This got her imagining spending romantic moments with Wu Di. Later in the evening, Nun Sing was at Wu Di's house. However, she couldn't gather the courage to invite Wu Di to that event. When she returned home, Nun Sing finally mustered the courage to ask Wu Di to join her. Thankfully, he accepted her invitation, 
although her request initially annoyed him because she had hesitated earlier. The next day, Woody was eager to learn Nun Singh's decision. Instead, he met Nun Singh's mother, as Nun Singh had left home without informing him. In the end, he helped Nun Singh's mother pack the fruits she had prepared. Meanwhile, Nun Singh was at school because she had some things to take care of. At the same time, Woody just learned that Nun Singh had a first love, and that person was the son of Nun Singh's mother's friend. This revelation led Wu Di to look at Nun Singh's high school photo again, while Nun Singh was reminiscing about her memories with Sho Jun. When Nun Singh tried to grab something, she almost toppled over a bunch of stuff. Fortunately, Wu Di showed up in time to assist her. This unexpected help made Nun Singh realize in her heart that she was starting to develop feelings for him. However, she didn't have the courage to tell him because she was afraid of hurting his feelings. As Wu Di was about to leave, Nun Singh boldly asked him to accompany her to the Pan event, which brought happiness to both of them. In the evening, Nun Singh was busy choosing her outfit for the event. Her mother, who knew about it, helped her and gave some advice. Meanwhile, Wu Di was also busy preparing for the event, planning to confess his feelings to Nun Singh. Surprisingly, it turned out that she had the same intentions as Wu Di. A few days later, they began preparing the things they would take to the event, and they were really excited to spend time together. The following day, Wu Di waited for Nun Singh to arrive, and she showed up not long after. There, Nun Singh looked different than usual, and Wu Di was quite impressed by how beautiful she looked. They then met up with their other friends. Surprisingly, Lu Zi Chan also joined the group. They all seemed really happy during the trip. When they reached the inn, Jaw assigned rooms to everyone, and they went for a walk together, enjoying the local food. There, Wu Di purposely asked Nun Singh to go separately from their other colleagues, so they could have some alone time. Luckily, they managed to do that and had a great time together. Afterward, they rejoined their friends, and Wu Di approached Lu Zichan. This time, Lu Zichan shared his thoughts about the novel written by Nun Singh and Wu Di. Surprisingly, he even mentioned that the male main character in the novel couldn't make the female main character happy. Not only that, Lu Zichan also mentioned that it might not be a good thing if the main male and female characters in a story actually end up dating and finding their love. He explained that once the man's task is fulfilled, just like the promise made at the fairy pool, the male character would return to where he came from and leave the female character. Hearing this made Wu Di lose his excitement. Even in the evening, Wu Di chose to stay in his room, and Nun Singh did the same because she couldn't see the fireworks. Wu Di kept thinking about what Lu Zichan had said, and it seemed like he wanted to give up on expressing his feelings to Nun Singh. But when he looked at the beautiful fireworks in the sky, he suddenly heard Nun Singh calling for help. This immediately drew him closer to her. Surprisingly, Nun Singh had intentionally called for help because she wanted to meet Wu Di. Initially, he wanted to distance himself from Nun Singh, but he couldn't do it because he had to stay close to her as part of the CC group. It turned out that at that moment, Nun Singh bravely confessed her feelings to Wu Di if she liked him. This took him by surprise, and he couldn't accept her feelings because he feared he might suddenly disappear. He didn't want to be selfish by making decisions that would hurt her. Suddenly, there were big fireworks in the sky. Wu Di quickly hugged Nun Singh because he thought she might get scared. This time, she didn't pay attention to Wu Di's worries. Seeing her courage, Wu Di accepted it and wanted to kiss her, but they were interrupted by some passing people. However, they still looked really happy. After that, Wu Di took Nun Singh somewhere and gave her a gift with a deep meaning. Nun Singh was deeply moved and happy to receive it. Woody then walked her back to her room, but their attempt at another kiss was thwarted by Jaw, who had figured out where they were. Then, they tried to hide. Later, they had to part ways, but it was a sweet separation since they were still in the early stages of falling in love. The next day, Woody was on the bus and acted distant from Nun Singh, following her request. However, halfway through the journey, she sat next to Woody and tried to wake him up when he fell asleep. At first, she thought he wouldn't wake up, but then, Woody put a headset on her ear, and they continued to enjoy each other's company. Some time later, they arrived back home. Nun Singh still didn't want to inform her mother about their relationship because she was worried about her reaction. Eventually, Woody agreed to respect Nun Singh's decision and understand the situation. When Nun Singh entered the house, her mother asked them both to join her. Soon after, Nun Singh quickly approached Woody, and they were both very nervous. Although it wasn't their first meeting with Nun Singh's mother, the atmosphere was different this time because they were already dating. However, with time, they started to act more relaxed. 
Muni was quite sweet as he asked Nun Singh for a hug before meeting her mother. Shortly after, Nun Singh's mother joined them, and the three of them gathered together. There, Nun Singh asked Wu Di how to wrap dumplings, but they almost got caught being too close by Nun Singh's mother. She insisted on showing them photos from the pain of event. Eventually, Nun Singh had to ask Wu Di to leave her house, and they both looked quite panicked. Then, Wu Di took advantage of the situation to surprise them multiple times, trying to avoid getting caught by Nun Singh's mother. Later, when they were in their rooms, they continued texting each other, and their love for each other was still strong. The next morning, Nun Singh woke up feeling very happy. As she was getting ready to go to work, she sent a message to Wu Di, but he didn't respond. Nun Singh eventually reached the bus stop. Nun Singh was surprised and touched by the romantic gesture Wu Di had planned for her, but she had a phone call from King, who asked for her help in setting up a meeting with Wu Di to discuss a script for a novel. Nun Singh felt a bit puzzled but still contacted Wu Di, and they had an adorable conversation where Wu Di mentioned he had a surprise for her. Later, when it was time to leave work, Wu Di was waiting in front of Nun Singh's workplace. Seeing him there made her very happy, even though Wu Di teased her a bit. They hugged each other, and the surprise Wu Di had mentioned turned out to be a homemade birth certificate. Wu Di had created a birth certificate for himself, wanting to have an identity and be responsible for their future together. However, Nun Singh deleted the birth certificate because it was illegal. After that, Nun Singh took Wu Di to visit her school and shared many stories with him. She even took him to see her classroom. In her classroom, Nun Singh told Wu Di about a tradition at her school. There was a man who had been writing the letter U on the blackboard for years. On graduation day, this man confessed his love to a woman whose name ended with the letter U. Hearing this, Wu Di immediately wrote Nun Singh's name on the blackboard and added the symbol of love making them both very happy. The next day, Wu Di accompanied Nun Singh to work, but she was worried about someone seeing their romantic act. However, she secretly wished for it. In the end, she got a short but sweet hug from Wu Di. Later, Wu Di met with King, who wanted to discuss the contract for dividing labor and profits. King wanted to ensure that Nun Singh received the fair share she deserved. After comparing the first novel Nun Singh wrote alone with the second one they co-wrote, King realized the difference in compensation wasn't significant. King had Nun Singh's best interests at heart. King also shared a novel that Nun Singh had written by herself. When Wu Di read the novel, he became very disappointed because it seemed that Nun Singh hadn't been completely honest with him. In the novel, Wu Di was portrayed as an evil character. In response, Wu Di abruptly left the company. Nun Singh saw him leaving and tried to chase after him, but their relationship was strained. Wu Di had just discovered that he was merely a character in one of Nun Singh's novels. This situation left Nun Singh feeling guilty, but she hadn't intended to deceive Wu Di. She simply lacked the courage to tell him the truth. Things got so chaotic that Wu Di needed to distance himself to calm down, as he couldn't bear to see Nun Singh at that moment. Before leaving, though, he gave her a gift. Nun Singh returned to the company feeling very sad, staring at the cake Wu Di had given her. She couldn't hold back her tears as she never meant to hide anything from him. That night, Wu Di struggled to accept that he was just a character in a novel and not a real person. He also thought about the Heihuan Palace that had been on his mind. Meanwhile, when Nun Singh returned from work, she checked on Wu Di, but he didn't respond. In fact, he was at home, avoiding Nun Singh because he didn't know how to handle the situation. There, she decided to wait for Wu Di in front of their building, hoping to see him. After a while, Wu Di appeared, but he avoided her and went straight home. At home, Wu Di felt guilty for leaving Nun Singh waiting. He eventually decided to meet with her. Surprisingly, Nun Singh wore a mask to hide her face from him. They sat together on the stairs, and she apologized, although Wu Di didn't blame her. At that time, Wu Di started questioning his life's purpose, because everything he thought he knew about himself turned out to be a lie. Nun Singh wanted to support him through this difficult time. In the end, the atmosphere between them began to soften, and Nun Singh even tried to charm Wu Di before leaving. The following day, Nun Singh wrote a letter to Wu Di, stating that if he had figured out his life's purpose, he should contact her. If not, he should buy an ice cream, telling that she couldn't meet him. At that time, she placed the letter under Wu Di's door and said her goodbyes. When they reached the company, Nun Singh and her colleagues felt sad because King had resigned and it was her last day at work. However, King encouraged everyone and tried to hide her own sadness. In the evening, Nun Singh found that the letter she left for Wu Di was gone, but didn't dare to knock on his door. In the middle of the night, she went to her mother's room and asked about the meaning of life. Meanwhile, 
Woody was still lost in thought after reading Nun Singh's letter. He saw the letter but didn't open his door. Later, when he came out of his room, he found Nun Singh on the balcony. She shared what her mother had told her. Not only that, when Nun Singh held Woody's hand, she noticed that he looked thinner. To cheer him up, she playfully teased Timmy. However, Woody was troubled by the fact that he had no childhood memories, while Nun Singh remembered hers vividly. This made her feel even guiltier, and she still wanted to be there for Woody. Surprisingly, their meeting managed to improve his mood slightly, and he fell asleep next to the letter Nun Singh had given him. The next evening, Wu Di received a package with a cute bowl inside, a reminder of Nun Singh's plan to create lasting memories together. Suddenly, he heard Nun Singh asking for help again and rushed to her side. This time, he was confused as Nun Singh treated him like a child and played the role of his mother's friend. It turned out that she wanted him to relive his childhood experiences. Knowing her efforts made Wu Di genuinely happy. Nun Singh also organized a birthday surprise for Wu Di but the atmosphere turned sad as she felt guilty toward him. However, she promised to always celebrate his birthdays together. Woody was deeply moved by her efforts and asked her to take care of herself. After blowing out the candles, Woody passionately kissed Nun Singh, but that kiss caused him to disappear. Realizing this, she searched for him in sadness because he was no longer with her. Meanwhile, Woody, who had just woken up, was startled to find himself back at Heihuan Palace. He immediately tried to locate Nun Singh, but instead encountered the palace residence. Known for his antagonistic nature, Woody acted in his usual way so people would recognize him. To his surprise, they knew him well and hailed him as the hero who had saved them. Woody inquired about fairies in the fairy pond in Hehuan and eventually found the pond. He prayed for help from the fairy there, but his request went unanswered. He even ventured into the pool, but his efforts were in vain. On the other hand, Nun Singh appeared very sad. She began to realize that Wu Di had returned to his original world. In the evening, she planted a seed in a cute bowl she found at Wu Di's house as a farewell memento. However, she's still wishing that Wu Di would find a way to return to her soon. In the following days, Nun Singh tried to carry on without Wu Di, although she still felt very sad. Despite her efforts to stay strong, she cherished the memories they had together. As time passed, the seeds Nun Singh had planted began to grow. The next day, she accompanied Lu Zi Chan to meet with investors, and he was dealing with a problem. He also asked Nun Singh for help in selling his house. When Nun Singh arrived at her company, she felt sorry for Lu Zi Chan and decided to contact King to discuss the matter. Later that evening, Nun Singh met with King and explained the problem Lu Zi Chan was facing, hoping that King could assist him. However, she didn't show much enthusiasm about helping him. The following day, Nun Singh was busy with work when she overheard someone talking about Wu Di, who was listed as the author of the novel she had written. This brought back memories of her happy times with him and made her feel sad. In the evening after returning home, Nun Singh continued to work. Her mother noticed her dedication and asked about the cute bell she had found in her room, unaware of its significance. Seeing the bell, Nun Singh hoped that Wu Di was doing well. During that time, Nun Singh met King once again. Not only did she meet King, but she also shared how overwhelmed she was with her workload. This revelation surprised King a bit, but she hid her feelings from Nun Singh. In fact, King even gave her a cake. To Nun Singh's surprise, the cake was exactly the same as the one Wu Di had given her, which brought back memories and made her cry. There, King noticed Nun Singh's emotional state and looked concerned, but Nun Singh had to leave quickly as Lu Zi Chan needed her assistance. When Nun Singh arrived at the company, she immediately helped Lu Zi Chan with his work. However, when she attempted to take something from Lu Zi Chan's desk, she saw flames, triggering her traumatic memories. This frightened her, and she reached out to Wu Di for help. Meanwhile, Wu Di could hear Nun Singh's cries for help but couldn't assist her immediately. It was only when Fairy Zhan arrived that he told Wu Di he needed to be ready for the consequences if their love story ended tragically. He had to be prepared to endure whatever hardships might come their way. Without hesitation, Woody accepted all the consequences and immediately came to Nun Singh's aid. Nun Singh continued to hold on to Woody, even though he didn't recognize her at all, despite her introducing herself. Later, when Woody left, Nun Singh chased after him, determined to help him remember their shared memories. She poured her heart out, expressing her love and need for him, which deeply moved him. However, Woody ended up being rude to her and still didn't recognize her. Soon after, Nun Singh returned home with no energy entering Wu Di's house and sitting in her room. Meanwhile, 
Moody felt frustrated and guilty about how he had treated her, but he believed it was necessary to avoid causing her suffering. On the other hand, while holding the show doll, Nunsing was thinking what had happened to Wu Di. Eventually, she understood his changes and knew what she needed to do. When Wu Di saw Nunsing on her balcony, he felt annoyed because she appeared genuinely happy. Then, shortly after, Nunsing asked Wu Di for help, hoping he would appear right in front of her. She didn't stop there because she knew that Wu Di would be less likely to leave the house if she made him jealous, especially of Lu Zi Chan. Turns out her efforts were successful because she had already figured out that Wu Di was pretending to have lost his memory. Then she hugged him in happiness when she realized he was back. Meanwhile, Lu Zi Chan continued to wait in the living room while Nun Sing and Wu Di were engaged in a lively conversation in the room. There, Wu Di shared his current situation with Nun Sing, but she wasn't worried at all because she knew they would face it together. Suddenly, Lu Zichan disrupted the lovely moment between Nunsing and Wu Di because he needed a room to rest. So, Nunsing quickly arranged a room for him and then went back to her own house. However, the parting of Nunsing and Wu Di this time was very sweet. Wu Di couldn't stop looking at her as she walked away, and Nunsing, in return, approached him and gave him a kiss. In the middle of the night, Wu Di was by her bedside. She realized he was there and covered him with a blanket. They held hands and fell asleep together. When Nunsing woke up, she found herself wrapped in a blanket with a little letter from Wu Di beside her. She realized that Wu Di had done it all for her. Meanwhile, Wu Di and Lu Zichan sat down to have breakfast together. At that time, Wu Di seemed annoyed because he had to prepare breakfast for Lu Zichan. Soon, Nunsing joined them. When Lu Zichan saw how close Nunsing and Wu Di were, he thought they were practicing roles for the novel. This assumption upset Wu Di, so he revealed that they were officially dating. Surprisingly, Lu Zichan didn't seem bothered by their relationship. The following day, Nunsing and her mother visited her father's grave. To everyone's surprise, Nunsing introduced Wu Di as her boyfriend or mother. At that moment, she wanted to introduce Wu Di to all her family members, bringing happiness even though her father and Shou Jun had passed away. On their way back home, Nunsing's mom asked Wu Di about his future plans with her daughter. Wu Di admitted he hadn't thought about it, which left her somewhat disappointed. In the evening, while Nunsing and her mother were washing dishes, Nunsing's mother expressed her concerns about Wu Di's attitude. She cared deeply for Nunsing's well being, and although she approved of their relationship, she couldn't help but worry. However, Nunsing couldn't reveal everything to her mother because Wu Di's background was quite complicated. Meanwhile, Wu Di had a dream about Shou Jun in the dream, he saw that Shou Jun also had feelings for Nunsing, but never expressed them openly. When Wu Di woke up, he was confused about the dream's significance. Later, as Wu Di left his room, he was surprised to find Lu Zichan holding a knife. He explained that he was brainstorming for his novel's storyline. Then Wu Di asked him about his dream and whether he would reveal his true feelings. Lu Zichan replied that he would, but Wu Di couldn't accept this answer. Lu Zichan even practiced another scene on Wu Di to get inspiration. Fortunately, Wu Di came up with an idea for the scene and Lu Zichan appreciated it. Wu Di then went to the bathroom, still pondering the dream's meaning. They wondered if it had any significance in their relationship with Nunsing. However, they decided to dismiss it as just a dream without much meaning. The next day, Wu Di greeted Nunsing's mother as she headed to work. However, he noticed that her attitude towards him had changed a bit. Later, Wu Di met Nunsing and brought breakfast. At that moment, she was delighted to see him, and they enjoyed breakfast together. Wu Di couldn't help but gaze at a photo of Shou Jun next to Nunsing's father's picture. He shared with Nunsing the questions her mother had asked him at the tomb. Unfortunately, his answers disappointed Nunsing's mother. Then, Nunsing tried to comfort Wu Di, since they still hadn't figured out how to reveal his secret to her mother. They managed to lighten the mood by discussing Nunsing's first kiss and first marriage, which made her very happy. And this happiness continued when she went to work. At the company, Nunsing was told that her novel with Wu Di had become very popular and was loved by many readers. Their co-workers celebrated this achievement, and even Lu Zi Chan joined in. Soon after, Nunsing shared the news with King, as her support and encouragement had played a significant role in their success. On another day, Wu Di saw their popular novel with Nunsing and immediately invited her to have dinner with him. In the evening, Nunsing arrived at the restaurant as planned. However, when she tried to contact Wu Di, she heard a cell phone ringing under the table. To her surprise, he was hiding there and suddenly stood up, giving her a surprise. 
It was a congratulatory gesture for her success. But Nun Singh felt embarrassed because everyone at the restaurant also joined in and celebrated her achievement. Wu Di eventually put a stop to the celebration, but he was still very happy because readers had praised his character in the novel. There, Nun Singh thanked Wu Di for his help, as it had contributed to their success. Later, when Nun Singh needed to use the restroom, she saw flames there, triggering her traumatic memories. Wu Di quickly came to her rescue and comforted her. He promised himself that he would do his best to help Nun Singh overcome her trauma. At that time, Nun Singh and Wu Di were strolling together and Woody began to talk about Shoujun Nun Singh's strong feelings for Shoujun had left a lasting trauma on her that had never healed. Surprisingly, Woody felt a bit jealous of this and wanted to know more. So they sat down and discussed Shoujun then, Nun Singh shared the story of what had happened between her and Shoujun, they had known each other since childhood, but as they grew up, Shoujun seemed to pay less attention to her. Nun Singh had wanted to express her feelings to him, but his actions had shattered her courage. Then, a tragic event struck Nun Singh's father and Sho Jun. It turned out that Sho Jun lost his life while saving Nun Singh and her father from a fire in the laboratory. This left her feeling terribly guilty, but she also realized Sho Jun's kindness and heroism. Learning about this, Woody tried to comfort Nun Singh, who was deeply saddened. He even told her that Sho Jun had always liked her. However, Nun Singh found it hard to believe. Later, when Woody got back home, he couldn't stop thinking about what Nun Singh had told him. He even recalled something Fairy Zhan had once said to him. Eventually, it dawned on Wu Di that his mission in this world was to help heal Nun Singh's trauma. The following day, Nun Singh woke up and couldn't help but smile when she read the message that Wu Di was going to pick her up from work. Soon after, Nun Singh went to work as usual. To her surprise, Lu Zi Chan asked her to resign from her position as his assistant. It turned out that he wanted her to work as a novelist at his company. This was quite unexpected for Nun Singh but she didn't hesitate for long before accepting the offer. On the other hand, Woody goes to visit Nun Singh's mother while she's practicing dance. Surprisingly, Woody's purpose was to meet Nun Singh's mother and confess that he didn't come from a world like theirs. Instead, he originated from a novel created by Nun Singh. This revelation could have made Woody leave abruptly. Nun Singh's mother remembered that there was indeed a character named Sho Woody in Nun Singh's novel, but was initially skeptical of Woody's claims. It wasn't until Wu Di displayed his extraordinary abilities that Nun Singh's mother began to believe his words. Wu Di then explained to her his mission in this world, which was to help heal Nun Singh's trauma, and he asked for her help. Afterward, Wu Di picked up Nun Singh from work. Her mother's acceptance had a good impact, and Nun Singh immediately embraced Wu Di. There he also congratulated her on securing the job she desired, and at that moment, they both looked incredibly happy. Wudi couldn't help but wonder if he would continue to accompany Nun Singh, knowing that his time in this world was limited. In the evening, Nun Singh went to visit King. During their conversation, Nun Singh tried to persuade King to return to the company and hoped for an improvement in her relationship with Lu Zi Chan. Later, Nun Singh returned home to Wudi because she had some work to finish with Lu Zi Chan. Surprisingly, Wudi started teasing Lu Zi Chan, and to everyone's surprise, Lu Zi Chan joined in the playful banter. He also planned to find a new place to live. While they were hugging, Lu Zi Chan noticed their affection but acted normally. The following day, Nun Singh got ready for work. She even had time to call Lu Zi Chan, as his driver was coming to pick them up. However, Wu Di was the first to open the door, having prepared breakfast for Nun Singh, which made her very happy. At that time, he took the opportunity to request a kiss, playfully, and though Nun Singh teased him in return, they ended up hugging each other. Later, Nun Singh returned home from work just to share some love with Wu Di, and he reciprocated the affection. Their actions were very endearing. Then, when they arrived at the company, Nun Singh and her two colleagues needed to interview a new assistant for Lu Zi Chan. Surprisingly, the new assistant turned out to be King. This made Nun Singh's co-workers hesitant about King, but they were also excited to have her back at the company. Even Lu Zi Chan was surprised to learn that King was his new assistant. When Nun Singh returned home from work, she tried calling Wu Di, but there was no answer. Unexpectedly, she found Wu Di in her room, dressed in a school uniform that resembled Sho Jun's. Nun Singh immediately remembered Sho Jun when she saw Wu Di like this. There, Wu Di explained that he wanted to help heal her before he left because he didn't want to see her continue to be sad and guilty. The following day, Nun Singh and Wu Di wore high school uniforms and emulated the way Sho Jun used to act. 
This successfully brought back her memories of her time with Shojun. However, when they were in a classroom at school, Nunsing suddenly remembered all the difficult moments she had shared with Shojun the painful memories, made her apologize repeatedly. But she finally mustered the courage to express her feelings to Shojun, something she had never done before. However, this sadness overwhelmed Wu Di, and he hugged Nunsing tightly. He'd assured her that Sho Jun had always cared about her, and his departure had nothing to do with her. Sho Jun's help had been a way of showing his love for Nunsing. To comfort her, to comfort her, Wu Di set off fireworks. Surprisingly, this act completely healed Nunsing's trauma, and they shared a passionate kiss. However, after the kiss, he disappeared because his mission was accomplished. Then, Wu Di found himself at the fairy pond, where Fairy Zan was waiting. He expressed his sincere gratitude for completing his missions. However, he made one more request. If Nunsing ever suffered again, he asked Fairy Zan to find someone to be with her. He wanted this person to be a hero, unlike him, who had an antagonistic nature. As he made this request, tears welled up in Woody's eyes. But it turned out that Woody wasn't the character from Nunsing's novel. Several years ago, when Sho Jun was still young, Fairy Zan had met him. Sho Jun had made a wish at the fairy pond, and Fairy Zan expected him to ask for toys or other small things. However, to her surprise, Sho Jun wished to always protect the girl with glasses and make her happy for the rest of her life. This request had startled Fairy Zan, and Sho Jun refused to change it. It turns out that the girl with glasses is Nun Sing. Since that time, Sho Jun had a crush on her. However, his life was cut short. Over the years, Fairy Zan had been watching over Nun Sing. When she made a wish for an unforgettable love, Fairy Zan granted her wish. So he chose Wu Di because he was a hero created by Sho Jun. This revelation took Wu Di by surprise. There, Fairy Zan congratulated him for passing all the tests and returned him to the same world as Nunsing. When Nunsing saw Wu Di return, she hugged him tightly, knowing that he wouldn't disappear anymore. There, Wu Di showed Nunsing a book written by Sho Jun, explaining that it was the book he came from. Overjoyed, she kissed Timmy, and they shared a passionate kiss. In the evening, Nunsing introduced Wu Di to her mother. They told her everything, leaving no secrets between them. At first, she seemed angry, but deep down, she was thrilled that Nunsing and Wu Di could be together without any worries. She also discussed their future child after finding out that Wu Di had an identity card. During that time, Nunsing and Wu Di shared some wonderful news with her mother, as they had officially tied the knot in marriage. Upon hearing this, Nunsing's mother was delighted and gave them presents to celebrate their union. They also shared the joyful news with Lu Zichan. Nunsing mentioned that after their wedding reception, they would be moving into Wu Di's house. However, Lu Zichan didn't catch the hint that this was actually Nunsing's way of telling him to vacate Wu Di's place. It seemed Lu Zichan was oblivious to the message, which frustrated Wu Di. Eventually, Nunsing sought King's help, and she kindly offered Lu Zichan a place to stay. The following day marked the wedding reception for Nunsing and Wu Di. They looked exceptionally beautiful and handsome, and neither of them had anticipated such a happy ending to their love story. During the event, Nunsing's mother handed over her responsibilities to Wu Di, even though she wasn't her biological mother. She cared deeply for Nunsing, and this gesture deeply moved Wu Di. When they exchanged their wedding vows, they poured their hearts out, and the tears they shed were a mixture of gratitude and happiness for their relationship. Finally, their wedding reception went off without a hitch. They shared a kiss to express their joy, and the festivities continued with a bouquet toss. Surprisingly, Ho was the one who caught the bouquet and took the opportunity to express his feelings for CC. After the event, they returned home. This time, Nunsing's mother understood the mood of the newlyweds, and they seemed quite nervous when they entered their room. Eventually, Wu Di initiated a night filled with love and happiness. The following day, Nunsing and Wu Di paid a visit to Nunsing's father's grave. There, Wu Di promised to continue taking care of and bringing happiness to Nunsing. He repeated the same vow in front of Shoujum's grave. However, Nunsing couldn't help but feel sad because her father couldn't be there to meet her future husband at the wedding. A few years later, Wu Di became irritated by Lu Zichan, who questioned whether he could have children. This led Wu Di to playfully suggest to Nunsing that they should have a child. After some teasing and temptation, they eventually welcomed a daughter into their family. Lu Zichan and King also had a daughter, making both couples proud parents. However, Lu Zichan found himself overwhelmed by the energy of their two lively children. Soon after, Nunsing and King soon joined them, and they all shared a meal together, looking like one big happy family. 
Then Nun Singh continued to excel in her career as a writer, earning the admiration of Wu Di and her daughter. Wu Di, on the other hand, became a lecturer at Sujung University. However, he couldn't help but feel a bit jealous when he noticed male fans approaching Nun Singh. They also revisited the fairy pond, where their daughter asked why it was called a fairy pond. There, Nun Singh explained that it was the place where she and Wu Di first met. The next day, Nun Singh held a press conference about her novel, and to everyone's surprise, Wu Di was there too. He approached Nun Singh and kissed her passionately in front of everyone. The series ends. The moral lesson from this series is if you're looking for love, forget Tinder, just dive into a pond wish and hope for the best.